Scenario 4. Reset. Expectations were high concerning Industry 4.0. A future-oriented study published in 2015, for example, stated that workers on the shop floor will switch from being machine operators to become creative conductors and decision makers in the smart factory. Furthermore, productivity will increase by more than 30%. In this way, value added and employment will be maintained in high wage Germany. But things have turned out differently. In the early 2020s, relentless job losses set in for two main reasons. On one hand, many activities are gradually being automated and by no means only simple and low-skilled ones. Even well-paid middle-class industrial and office jobs are affected. In the retail trade and logistics, hundreds of thousands of jobs are lost. Intelligent architecture and static software, as well as building robots, change the construction industry fundamentally. Tasks in controlling and accounting are also outsourced to algorithm-based service clouds as are legal consultation and journalistic activities. Digital signal boxes and flight control systems make it possible to manage rail and air traffic with few personnel. The Internet of Things and real-time sensor technology make a large proportion of traditional maintenance work obsolete. Smart factories produce largely without human labor. Whole job profiles disappear. Autonomous driving and care bots are on the point of achieving commercial viability. All tasks are automated if technically and economically feasible. In many sectors, employment exists only in automation gaps. Furthermore, technological change has led to major productivity increases, resulting in enormous overcapacity on the world market. Even the German economy slides into a deep recession in the mid-2020s that forces most companies to cut costs, making even more employees redundant and outsourcing to platforms and better value third-party providers. Unemployment in Germany tops the 6 million mark. Politics does not stand by idly in the face of the economic disruption of this period. Attempts are made to improve the country's competitiveness and attractiveness as an investment location by means of subsidies for short-time working and further training, lowering labor standards and cutting minimum wages, tax incentives and settlement premiums for companies, and finally, special economic zones. Elections are won on promises to protect the domestic economy. Authoritarian political styles increasingly gain favor. In the face of global supply chains and a platform economy dominated by a few powerful companies, not to mention declining tax revenues, however, politicians do not have much leeway. Power and wealth are concentrated in a few hands. The negotiating power of workers' representatives diminishes as unemployment rises. In the new world of work, people, generally speaking, are no longer conductors, but are themselves conducted through the working day by digital control systems. In place of vocational education and training, what are colloquially known as quick-fit instruction programs enter the scene. Real-time systems measure performance and error rates. Even short intervals of inactivity can rapidly lead to a warning. The income gap becomes increasingly grotesque. While capital income continues to grow, come rain or shine, earnings from employment are falling relentlessly. Although there is a high wage sector for the technological elite, content developers and system architects, as well as higher management, for the mass of employees, the digital transformation means, depending on use category, various degrees of lower pay. The number of crowd workers who hire themselves out via platforms continues to rise, which further increases the pressure on those still with permanent jobs. Even if many products have become much cheaper and rents are no longer rising, all in all money is getting tighter and tighter for most people. 
by the late 2020s, it is normal for people to be working several jobs. In order to make ends meet, people exhaust their savings. Many people take in lodgers or provide driving services with their own cars or motorbikes. People have to care for their own relatives. What once promised more flexibility and began as home office day has turned into systematic outsourcing. Around 40% of employees now work entirely from home via the internet. That saves companies not only the cost of office and workspace, but also what were formerly personnel departments are now called procurement departments. General business conditions are increasingly taking the place of labor and social law. Collective bargaining and co-determination rights simply don't apply there anymore. Virtually no one has faith in democracy and its established institutions. People feel that they have been abandoned to their fate. The exhausting demands of going it alone, the constant financial uncertainty, feelings of helplessness in the face of digital technology from which there is no hiding place, and unrelenting pressure to perform lead, sooner or later, to anger and demands for everything to change. People get together, take things into their own hands, and go out onto the streets. The impact of the new movements, however, lies not so much in their success in combating the existing power relations as in the realm of ideas and the desire to accomplish something new collectively. In 2035, a wide range of initiatives concerning mutual aid, exchange, and securing a livelihood have gained ground. It turns out that the technologies of the platform economy can also be used for alternative, decentralized forms of production. New communities of solidarity and regional networks emerge that also cooperate globally. Community-oriented enterprise concepts and currencies sow the seeds of a flourishing proximity economy and fair trade. The benchmark here is not sales and profits, but a feeling of togetherness, meaningful activities in humane working conditions, and whatever people need for a decent life. They are still only tender shoots, but they have a finger on the pulse of the times.